Shalom, brothers and sisters. As always, all honor and esteem goes to our Heavenly Father Yahweh in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach. This is the third installment of this series, a conversation about the serpent marriage. I want to remind y'all that this is a conversation about this topic. This is not a lesson. This is not no one trying to convince you. This is something that was placed upon me to think about and to really get an understanding on concerning the Most High and what He would honor and accept. And so this question is being brought to you to see your thoughts on it as well. Thank you for your thoughts, but there's no need to fight me or fight against me when I'm just sitting here having a conversation with my bruise about a subject, brothers and sisters. So if you do have some questions or concerns, show your love and put it in a way that you're just sitting down at the table or, or me and you sitting down on a couch or we're just outside just talking. This is what this conversation series is about opening up let me know your thoughts on this subject whether you agree or disagree um, but something that was put on me is that I know that the father is not honoring those marriages that you participate in in the land of your captivity in their religions in their Sunday worship in assemblies that honor who? Hashatan. In a place where the law such commandments of the Most High is, is, is talked down on, where they get angry if you mention following the law such commandments, they will tear you apart. This is the question. And I'm not telling anybody to get divorced, brothers and sisters. I'm not saying that. I say you need to think about, you really need to think about this question and what took place when you stood on the altar of Hashatan before Hashatan serpent men who's been teaching you to turn away from the Father and you exchange the marriage ring. I'm not talking about any other rings you put on your finger. Those, those are fine. But when you're standing before him doing that ritual, that celebration of joining to a man and a woman together before G.O.D. and J.C., which is a diff, to, two totally different characters than Yahweh and Yahusha. When you're standing before them and that particular priest officiates your wedding, in that place, and both of you signed the, the wedding um, papers and everything, do you think the father has to honor that marriage? Because if he honors that marriage that took place in that place before that particular um, uh, pastor, preacher of Hachatan's place of worship, if he honors that, then he has to honor up the other things that take place in that Sunday worshiping assembly. And we know that the Father is set apart. He's Kodesh. He will not honor that wickedness. He will not. He didn't do it even with the, the messengers that fell down, that came down. They didn't. They came down to have marital relations with women that weren't even made for them. Did the father accept and honor that marriage? No, he did not. It went against his word. It went against his word. This particular Serpent marriage goes against the Father's word. 
It's no way in line with it, brothers and sisters. And it's time to wake up all the way out of Babylon in this area concerning the marriages you participated in, how you did it. There's a different way. The father told us to have a marriage than he did the other Gentiles of the other nations, the way they do things. He could care less. They are as spittle to him. But for us, who is his inheritance, we shall be bound by what he says. So when it's concerning the Hebrew Yahshua-like man and woman coming together, yes, that is bound. We are bound like that. And when it's concerning a Hebrew and a Gentile uh, coming together uh, under a marriage that he has approved, right? They are bound. They're underneath the bond of the contract, the covenant, and everything that's in the scriptures. But outside of that, the most high don't have to honor and respect that. If you got together and you came together and whether you were ignorant or not, and you got married in the temple of Zeus, you think he gonna honor that? He got married in the temple of Zeus, invoked the name of Zeus and everything, and then you sign contracts with his priests, exchange those rings and vows and everything, and you you think the father going to sit there and honor that? He has never honored any idol worship that took place by us. He would be breaking his own laws, statutes, commandments by doing that. So you do have to know and understand what you're talking about, brothers and sisters, before you say stuff. Get a deeper understanding and think for a while go sit and pray and fast about this subject and think about how Kodesh the father is and would he actually sit there and honor what you did on the serpent's doorsteps and think about that just take some time and if you can't understand it Leave it in his hands until he bring that proper understanding. Because the more and more you get to know the Most High, the more and more you know how Kodesh he is. And this is a subject that we all need to talk about. Because we're in Babylon. We're in Babylon's place. We have been in their assemblies. We have done a whole lot concerning the serpent seed and the serpent marriage. And what the serpent has given us to honor and respect in his world. We're coming out of that. And this is just another subject we have to address, brothers and sisters. Now, some of you may not understand that in 1 Corinthians, it was talking about the Gentiles of our people. Yeah, let me go down here to some of these comments. And I'm not putting anybody on the spot because everybody has a right to their thoughts and opinions. And But you really need to think about this, bro, brothers and sisters. Truly. Um, let me see. Okay, we got someone saying interesting. That's cool. You're thinking about this. You give yourself time to think about this. And think about how set apart the father is how kodesh he is and and answer the real question does he really have to honor the serpent's marriage it's just really something to think about and it is a good conversation brothers and sisters no need to get all activating and tripping and that this is not a lesson now when I do a lesson, it's going to be with scripts and we're going to go over this with scriptures and it's going to probably be a long lesson as well because we got to cover all of it, all the aspects of marriage throughout all these different books. Uh, right here, um, my Koti Hadassah is saying so true. I'm so glad to be learning the ways of Yahweh. I'm so tired of the wicked beast system. Hallelujah. The truth will always prevail. So true. The truth will always prevail. And this is just another topic we are bringing out 
in the last days before Hamashiach returned so that we could start setting things right so we can understand what was made wrong starting with our sins against him now I got my brother here Donovan appreciate your comments brothers brothers and sisters um yes this here is um This here, I don't agree with. Okay, right here he says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. And Donovan, I'm not putting you on the spot, bro. I'm just, your comment is already in the comment section for the public to view. Uh, I'm just going over this. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of Yahweh. The powers that be are ordained of Yahweh. This means if you are married according to the laws of whatever land you happen to be in, you're married in the sight of our Most High. He does honor that union. And I cannot agree with that because the Father has not honored any wicked thing that has come from Hashatan. Instead, Instead, he condemns and judges everything that comes from Hashatan and his fallen minions that has started their assemblies, different assemblies around the world and different religions around the world. The father not going to honor a marriage of uh, those who went into the Buddhist temple and got married. Do you know what that makes him? Just take time to think, bro. This this is what this this video is about. Giving you time to think about this. When you drop to your knees and pray to the Father about this subject and let him answer you whether he's going to honor somebody walking in a temple of Buddha and getting married. Oh no. Just like he wouldn't honor that. He wouldn't honor. Us walking in those. Serpent Sunday worshiping assemblies. Exchanging our vows. And invoking those names. Before their deity. That they worship. Their, their so called mighty one. This is part of the grand delusion. Brothers and sisters. And so I respond with this here, as you can see, you can't have both ways, bro. If you recognize that marriage that was done under Hashatan's worship service, he will not recognize it. That's why we got rid of the Moabites and Medanites and any children we had with them after marrying them. So how can the father didn't honor these marriages? We did marry them. But he didn't, he didn't recognize it. He didn't even honor it. He told you to put him away. And I say thank you for your input. But I disagree. The father gave us certain laws. But the other nations are not under them. That is why he could cancel any union with heathens. And we got examples of that. Brothers and sisters. There's examples of him canceling. It's not that he's going against his own word, brothers and sisters, when he says, put that woman away. You think Abraham went against the word of the Most High when he told Ishmael to put his wife away? Think about that. There's more to this than you're thinking. So he says, son of the Most High, be careful Ark, of teaching the Most High's children to divorce and get rid of their lawful children before Yahweh. This is not what this is about. It's a conversation, brothers and sisters. And he says, I will be held accountable for what, what I'm teaching and any damage that results. So y'all know from the first conversation and this sec and the second conversation and this one. That that's all it is. It's a conversation. This is not no teaching. It's something to think about, something to look at. And, and, and it's a question that I did ask for your input on. So be careful what you're telling people, 
you might be bearing false witness. So again, this video was a conversation with my bruise. Okay. Um, uh, he goes on further to say, for Yahweh, the Lua of Yasharal saith that he hateth putting away. For one covereth violence with his garment, saith Yahweh of hosts. Therefore take heed to your spirit that you deal not treacherously. I do not see the Most High making a distinction between Yasharal and heathens in the paragraph. Please point it out to me if you see it here. All right. I don't think he's been paying attention to this awakening uh, or this channel here. There is a distinction between the people the Father calls his and those who are joined on to us as a group, as a whole nation of people together. And there's a distinction between those outside of those walls. Who are the other nations? Who are as bitter to him? Who has nothing to the Father? He, he, he's not regarding them except for using them for, uh, correcting us. This has to be understood, brothers and sisters. I've been putting up videos and so that you can know the difference between a repentant sinner and unrepentant sinner. You'll know the difference between a righteous and a righteous. That way you can put the scriptures in its proper perspective. When he's talking here, he's talking to us and people with us, joined on to us. The best examples to look at is go look at my video series the house of Abraham Isaac Jacob Yahusha and Yahweh go look at the, that video series to get an understanding who the father is talking to when he put this all these scriptures together who he gave it to now yes we were to facilitate and be the light to the other nations and uh, those who have faith and those who will want to come and serve the Father were grafted in. But the other nations as a whole has not accepted him or his ways. They have accepted other, other deities and allures. And they have accepted other mighty ones in place of him to serve them and to follow the ways that come from those entities. So he turned them over to a great delusion. All these religions and especially this, these government systems that's supposed to be the best in the world with de uh, democracy, which is democracy to me. Uh, the father said he has not dealt so with any other nation. He has not dealt so with any other nation. He has chosen us and given it to us. And then we supposed to bring that to those who want to hear. Those who want to join us in worshiping the Heavenly Father. And there's still a whole lot of understanding that you need to get, my brother. And who's Paul? Who is Paul talking to? Where did he go? Uh... These laws, statutes, and commandments are for the elect and what they call the saints and the Gentiles who are grafted into us. So get more understanding, my brother, before you say anything else that's uh, breaking commandments against the Father. Okay. We have someone named Vera that says, I'm not sure about what you are talking about. Am I to understand that there's a problem with a marriage between a husband and wife? No, that's not the conversation here. The conversation is about the serpent. 
marriage. And so I go over an example. I said, would you get married in the temple of Zeus in honor and tribute to him, exchanging vows in his name? And I say, think about that. That's what this video is about. And my brother says here, yes, he does. That's why he said not to divorce the unbelieving spouse. If they agree to live peacefully with you or less fornication. So he brings in uh, this example. And again, you got to know that uh, the father is talking about uh, the Gentiles of our people that we went to in those areas. You have to have this understanding of who Paul went to. Paul didn't just go to some wicked, unrepentant sinner who's worshiping all these different deities and could care less about the Most High. That's not the Gentile he went to. He went to the Gentile of our people in those areas because we were scattered into those areas during the first captivity, the Babylonian captivity. And you also had the, the northern kingdom scattered into the same areas. So there were synagogues in those areas. You, the other Gentiles did not build synagogues for themselves in those areas. They didn't want to follow what we follow. But we were in those areas. So we built synagogues. And that's why in Acts chapter uh, 15, it talks about telling the Gentiles to do these five things and then uh, it goes further to say because they have Moses being taught in the synagogues basically in those areas where they live so they was given um, they was given milk that's what you give babies when they first come in to walk you don't, you don't just Throw the book at them and say, here, follow all of this right now. You wouldn't do that to your own children. You would teach them little by little as they can understand. So this is what Paul and uh, James and them was talking about in that particular chapter. They got Moses being taught in the synagogues up there. They were essentially saying they would learn it all up there. Give them these five to seven things to follow. They will remember that. Let them practice that. Because they got Moses being taught in those synagogues. In those areas. And they were happy. And they went away. Because James and Paul and them knew that they was feeding babies. And they just needed milk. Not all that thick meat that was being burdened upon them. He wasn't saying do away with all the law, statutes, and commandments. He was saying just give them a little taste. Give, give them that, that formula, you know. Give them breast milk. That's all they can handle right now. And then, of course, they will handle more palatable things like uh, smashed up fruits vegetables and then eventually they'll have teeth they'll be able to chew and eat and their digestive system will be up to par to digest all that so right now um, you got to understand get more digestive food in your system to understand how Kodesh the Most High is and how he will not honor and respect any marriage outside of what he put in the book. And that's what I explained in the first video that his, his first choice of marriage is two virgins coming together in marriage where the hymen is broken and blood is spilled that the covenant may be sealed in blood like the covenant he had with us 
with Moses and now with Hamashiach. In blood. That's the first covenant. Now that we done all been in the Babylonian system and had boyfriends and girlfriends and we didn't understand that the first time we laid with someone and broke their hymen or they laid with someone and broke their own hymen with that person. That was a blood covenant contract and anything after that pretty much fornication and hooking up because he's not recognizing what you've done in those temples or the chapels and in, in, um, in Vegas or anywhere else that you done invoked a name of a, another so-called mighty one to honor the, f the father said there is none beside him there is none beside him who else supposed to get the honor in all things like he said in all things give honor and praise to the father do all things in his name. So you mean to tell me that, brothers and sisters, and this is for everybody. You mean to tell me that the father is, does have to honor a serpent marriage, a Buddha marriage, a Zeus marriage, an Allah marriage? Any marriage, we see examples throughout the whole book. He did not honor just any marriage. It's there. It's, it's there for you to go look up yourself and read these, read about the women we put away in the past. We just put them away. There was no questions. The father said, put them, put them away. We put them away. Did he go against his own word? Should he have honored those marriages? Think about that, brothers and sisters. Really take time to think about this. And again, um, I welcome your questions your comments about this subject because this is a conversation between brews between even gentiles grafting in gentiles because they are under the same law sets commandments and i would do a full video about this in the future with the laws statutes and commandments and all the examples that we see in the scriptures. So y'all be prepared for that. While you're fasting and praying about this subject. And thinking about your own marriages that took place. Do you think he's honoring that marriage that you did in that. Unrighteous temple that you went in underneath the uh, Sunday worshiping serpent. Just think about that. And uh, those rings you exchanged. All right, brothers and sisters, thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for the conversation. And uh, be careful, brothers and sisters. Be careful out there. We're waking the people. We're waking up. And we're just learning the proper ways of the Father in all things. And he's bringing out things little by little to us that we may understand. So with that, I'm going to say Shalom, brothers and sisters, and see you in the next video or when I return from my pur my full purge. <laughs>